So hello and welcome to the One Day Yossi podcast. This is your host, Jose Alonzo, here to inspire you to become more by discussing different topics, ideas, goals, and stories. I appreciate each and every one of you for listening and watching this. Hashtag Otis Podcast. For those of you watching and listening, go ahead and screenshot this, share it on your social media, share it on Instagram. That's where we're at mostly at One Day Yossi Podcast, at One Day Yossi Podcast. Super excited about today's topic because we have a legend in the industry, somebody that I've uh, I've been following and somebody that I've, I've uh, that I've met that's uh, doing a tremendous amount of work and and on content when it comes to you know motivating people, inspiring people, giving value, and just in the industry. So I don't want to take too much. I don't want to burst his bubble. I want him to introduce himself, talk to him uh, to you guys about what it, who he is, what he's about, the success he's had, and then just have some conversation with him. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, just want to introduce you to none other than the, the I, was, I don't know if I should say owner or the person that takes care of, of the No Soliciting Bro Instagram, Greg Martinez. What's up, man, bro? What's up? What's up, man? How you doing, Jose? Great, I'm, just, I'm, just super, I'm just super grateful to be on here, bro. Super grateful. Um, yeah, my name is Rick Martinez. I'm originally from Marietta, California, started a meme page as just like an outlet for my creativity. And that was about three years ago. And from there till now, dude, the, I guess the, the Instagram page has grown, but more importantly, the movement in the community that we've been able to build because of it. Um, it's specifically door to door sales memes. And I do door-to-door sales, uh, pest control, alarms, solar. Uh, I haven't dabbled in yet, but I will here this year. And this is, it's door-to-door sales. Most people think that or don't know that door-to-door is still a thing, um, but it is. There's about 15,000 people that follow me and it's, it's, it's a very tough industry. And I mean, I think you, you started doing some, some door-to-door a while back, right, Jose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a, I did it for a, I did it for about, I probably did it for a cool, maybe like seven, seven, eight months. Like seven, eight months. I did. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's hard, right? I did Frontier. Frontier yeah. internet sales. Oh man. How, how was that? Uh, it was, uh, I mean, for being my first time joining the industry, of course it was different. I mean, I've done sales before I was, I sold cars before, but it wasn't the same as door-to-door sales. So there's a lot of skills that you got to learn. And it was fun because uh, you get to act the way you want to act and respond, but respectfully. But it was, it was, it was a bit tough, to be honest, because um, when you hear sales, you think everything else is the same thing. But no, door-to-door sales is totally different. So it was a bit diff- it was difficult for me to transition from the regular sales selling cars to door-to-door sales, like learning the, like the, the skills from, you know, um the report building rapport you know building that knowledge to you know, closing and things like that so it was pretty tough for me but um uh, overall i got i learned a lot but there's certain things that happened in my life so i had to you know i couldn't be in the industry anymore but it, it was a lot of fun and, and there's a challenge for sure yeah definitely it's it's a completely interesting skill set to have to be able to go up to somebody's door introduce yourself and then have them buy whatever it is that you're selling. Cause for the most part, people don't wake up thinking, Oh, I'm going to buy like a different internet package. Today. Oh, or I'm going to buy uh, like pet pest control system, or I'm going to buy a security system for my home, or I'm going to take a loan for $50 for solar panels. Like one wakes up thinking that. So the amount of skills that you have to have, the amount of creativity, and the amount of pers- persistence to be able to go to somebody, a random person's door and more than likely a city that you don't even live in and right. persuade them or I guess transfer the energy of the excitement that you have to your potential customer for them to pull the trigger on whatever it is that you're selling. Like that is a skill set and not that many people have it. You, you touched on something that's I think super big in today's world is, is, is the self-confidence and the self-belief in yourself mm-hmm. because one, the world struggles with it. Like there aren't very many, many confident people. There are a lot of egotistical people, which is a very different thing. Okay. They, they talk, 
but confidence is being able to walk the walk the walk. You know what I mean? So that's what it is. Is in one of the things that I learned to build my confidence is to keep the promises that I make to myself. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to this and you feel like you struggle with confidence in yourself, just keep the promises that you make to yourself, whether that be eating clean, stop eating fast food, waking up at a specific time, going to the gym, taking care of your kids, spending more time with your kids, calling that person that, that you've been meaning to call. We put off all the difference, but when you put off something, you're breaking that promise to yourself. And internally, your DNA is starting to think, well, I can't even trust myself. Wow. So we wonder why, and then we wonder why in, in today's society, we have a lack of confidence, but we have a surplus of ego. Um, right now, because this whole you know issue that happened worldwide, um, don't really want to say it um, here on our podcast, but you know what I'm talking about, this whole worldwide uh, problem we have, but what's going on in the industry right now? So what, what have you seen? What have you noticed? Like, um, tell us a little bit more what's going on. I, I saw people do well. I did better last year during this whole worldwide thing than I did in years past. Oh, wow. Okay. So I had my best year. I traveled a lot more for work. Right. And then I saw people just absolutely destroy industry records. Because wow. here, here's the thing is that there, there, there's going to be opposition in the marketing. And in an industry that thrives on face-to-face communication, we just adjusted. We adapted. And that's anything in life. Like, no one was planning for it. But, yeah, we saw businesses thrive. We saw businesses go under. Um, and not to get too political, but, I mean, the people had the opportunity to adjust. They just chose not to because they're so set in their ways. It was just a shift in mentality to think, okay, well, this came up. How do we adjust? How do we get this product to this consumer? How do we get this to that person? Or what, what, whatever it is you do in life, whatever it is you, you do in business, is that if people have become so transactional that it's ABC rather than and rather than um, there's transactional and intentional. You have to have the intention behind what you do to be able to get your customers, the product, service, whatever it may be. But if your intention is just for a quick buck, you're going to fail. If your intention is to give an experience that people are going to remember you and keep coming back to you, that's where you can adjust. It comes down to the creativity. Because in life, like life is always going to throw stuff at you. It's how you adjust to what gets thrown at you. If you can adjust, perfect. But more often than not, people refuse to adjust. People refuse to think that there's a new way or a better way or not, not even, they, they just get so stuck in their box that, that they can't think outside of it. Yeah. A lot of the people who I work with got super creative. Wow. They got super creative. Like, I mean, we pushed a digital business card app, which allowed us to now gather people's information, a name, phone number, address. You can text your information directly to them. And now you have their information saved in your personal CRM. If you wanted to follow up with that customer, you could. If you wanted to do a mass text to all the leads that you have, you can. That's dope. If you, if, if you wanted to market to them directly on Facebook, you can, you can link your Facebook pixel key to that. But everybody, but everyone was like, but I have a business card. I'm like, no, I don't do business cards. Like because of this issue, I had to transition everything electronically because I'm a responsible person in these dire times. They're like, oh, you're right. So do you want me to send you my digital business card to a phone or to an email? Nice. For what I say, people always say, perfect. What is your name and your last name? Okay, perfect. And what what's a what's a good phone number for you so I can text this to you? And they would send it. I would send my digital business card. I would get notifications when they open it. And guess what? I now have their information in my personal CRM. Uh, so did I adjust? Of course I did. But at the same time, most years in the car, and they'd be like, Aren't you aware of what's going on in the world? And oh shit, yeah, my bad just adjust you know what i mean <laughs> just being better just be be better because people will receive you a lot better 
And like, if, if, if they receive you better, you make more sales. If you make more sales, you make more money. If you make more money, you're able to buy the things that you want to buy. You're able to help the people that you want to help, but you can't do that. If you're sleeping in showing up, like right as the meeting is starting or showing up late to whatever meeting. Right. And kind of demanding success when you haven't put in the, the deposit of success. <laughs> dude, I love, dude, and if we can, I, I, I would love to expand on, on the concept of loving yourself because I feel like this phrase is poorly and overly thrown around in today's society. Yep. Hashtag, I love myself. But do you actually love yourself? Are you, are you putting yourself first? There's a lot of people yep. in bad relationships whether that be with a significant other family work whatever it may be but you stay there because you think that it's the place to be Mm. so you technically don't love yourself do you love yourself enough to wake up and make the sacrifices and make the changes for yourself to be the best version of yourself because wouldn't the best version of your of yourself love yourself right if you love yourself do the things you say you're going to do Amen. Take care of your body. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind. Take care of your spirit. Take care of your soul. Yep. If you're not, if if you're not doing these things, you cannot say that you love yourself. Be- because me. if you, because if you did, you would be doing the things that you know you should be doing. I know for a fact that I'm still doing things that I know I shouldn't be doing. So I can't say at the end of the day, I love myself. I I love myself enough to try and make the changes, but at the end of the day, I can't say because words, words do so much. Think think of it this way. You keep doing all the crap that you're doing. You keep telling yourself, I love myself, right? That now gets getting, that now that gets engraved into your DNA and you are now solidifying and cementing that person who you are. Do you want to be the person that you are forever can you say that you were in a position to where if if i can say i love myself right now and who i am at this very moment is who i will be for the rest of my life and you have to live with that do you think that you will have the happiness the finances the 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 social status everything do you do you have everything that you want right now because if you were to say i love myself right now this is who you are for forever no going back damn tell them bro we we can't and that's that's just what it is and you you touched on something so great that it's god's timing i grew up lds right i grew up mormon um one 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 of the one of the 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 greatest lessons that i ever taught and learned and preach about god's timing is it's when we are prepared put yourself in god's shoes we are all children of god correct so as a father, if, 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 if your boy is doing things right, you're going to give him what he's asking for. You may not give it to him in the moment that he's asking for it, but you're eventually going to give it to him. But if he, keeps, if he keeps crying, if he's not putting his toys away, if he's not doing the things that he's asked to do, you are less likely to give him the things that he's asking for. Maybe one day you'll give it to him. But do you want to expedite success? Do you want to expedite blessings? Start doing the little things, whether that be religious or if you don't believe in God and you believe in universe and you believe in the karma and you believe in karma, start putting out good vibes into the universe. Start, start putting good actions out into the universe and the universe will deliver back. No doubt. 100%. I'm believing that 100%, bro. Other than that, bro, again, thank you so much for everybody who is listening and watching. Don't forget to screenshot this. Share it on your social media. Share it on Instagram. That's where we're at, mostly at One Day You'll See Podcast. Once again, at One Day You'll See Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share this content with everybody inside uh, around the world so we can continue helping other people and making a difference. Keep smiling. Keep spreading positive vibes. Keep sharing value. Keep making somebody smile and let's continue to make this world a better place. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Have the great rest of the week and we'll see you guys to the next episode. Bro, Rick, thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.